Hello everybody and welcome to episode 1 of Introduction to Scripting um, of my grander series, my reboot and revamp of my former Roblox game development series, uh, Scripting in Roblox. So this series is going to focus almost entirely on just the scripting side of everything because I don't know, that's what I'm better at. And it's what the other series ended up eventually boiling down to. So today is an introduction to scripting, and it's the part one of this. There will be several parts to this episode. Now, I'll quickly explain how this grander scripting Roblox series will work. Essentially, there will be many, many, many subject areas taught. Each of them sort of building upon the other, but not directly. There will be things such as today, Introduction to Roblox Scripting, and other individual projects and um, ideas that we'll tackle. However, I'll put these all, each project, into their own playlist with the parts in, of course, sequential order, uh, chronological order, but I'll also be putting them into the scripting in Roblox series in chronological order. Taking to um, account though that they're not going to build upon each other so much in the scripting in Roblox series. They're, they will be very segmented parts. Um, however, they should give you the greater idea on how Roblox scripting really works. Now, I'm going to be using this format because Roblox releases so many different um, services and ways to work with scripting um, that I have to do this in order to keep up with everything they release. Alright, so today is introduction to scripting. This is essential to watch all the way through all of the episodes in this part before you can continue on to anything else unless you're already a pretty good scripter. So, first things first, how do you create a script? Well, to create a script, you have to use the Advanced Objects menu. If you don't have the Advanced Objects menu, you can pull that up by going to Insert and clicking Advanced Objects. The menu will pop up. It might pop up in an actual pop-up, more like this, but I attach it to the bottom of my screen because I use it very often and it's just more helpful there. You can put it wherever you want. Now, where should you insert a script is another question. But before I get to that, I better explain the Explorer. The Explorer is a small window um, that is usually attached to the top right of the screen. Here you will find things like workspace, players, lighting, replicated first, and so on. Several of these items will have these little arrows next to them. If you click them, it expands the entire object, as I just did for workspace. Now you can see other objects like terrain, camera, and base plate. All of these objects have a different icon. Or, if they don't have a different icon, it's because they're the same essential thing as something else. The icons represent what type of part something is. For instance, workspace looks like a globe, because workspace is actually the hard material, the world that your players will play in. Everything not in workspace cannot technically really be seen, at least not in the 3D space. Terrain is what is used for terrain building, as I'm sure you've seen, however, it's not quite all that popular. Terrain building looks Minecrafty, people say. However, it is becoming more and more prevalent as Roblox updates it. This brick icon really just means a brick. This is our base plate. It's the main plate of our game, the ground upon which everything will be built. However, since this is a scripting series, we probably won't be building. So, down here you will see server script service. This one has a small scroll icon on top of what looks to be sort of a cloud. 
This is actually a perfect representation of what it really is. Server script service is where you should put all of your scripts that run on the server. I'll get into servers and clients and all that in a later episode, but just know that the server means the actual game running at Roblox's headquarters where your game is hosted. Server script service is meant to only hold scripts. These scripts are only run on the server, which can almost be seen sort of as a cloud server, because it's not local to any player, but it exists. To insert a script into server script service, you have to select it. When you do that, you should see this blue rectangle around it. Then you can insert a script. There are two options, a module script, which we'll get into at a later time, or script. Go with script. We now have a new script that just opened up. Now, you'll notice yours probably looks a lot different than mine. Why is this? Well, it's because I've customized my script editor to my liking. To customize your script editor, go to File, Settings. After a few moments, the settings will load, and in these settings, you can scroll down Oh, there we go, to script editor colors. You can change all of these colors to look exactly how you want it. It's very customizable. To increase the size of your text, press and hold control and then scroll up with your mouse wheel. To decrease it, press and hold control and scroll down with your mouse wheel. I'm going to scroll up a bit so that you can see better what I'm writing. Right here already is a script that is fully functional. It is called a Hello World script. This is typically people's very first script. This script will print the words Hello World, not onto a piece of paper using a printer, but onto your screen using the output. What's the output? That's another good question. The output is much like the Explorer the properties, or the advanced objects. It's a window that you should probably dock onto your screen. To bring your output into view, go to the View tab and look for the button that says Output. It should have this icon. However, if Roblox updates it, it might not. So just look for the word Output. You can see my output is already docked to the left side of my screen. You can click and hold the title bar and drag this output anywhere you want. But I'm going to keep it here. This output window is where everything will be printed that has to do with your game. Things like important information about what's running and where it's at. Errors in your scripts or other people's scripts that you're using in your game. When your game is saving, which typically isn't useful unless you're in a studio. The output is your best friend as a scripter. If something's not working right, you can use the output either by looking for an error, which will be in blue, red text as it is up here, and then below the error, there should be blue text, which says when it happened, as well as where the error occurred in what script, meaning what line and what script. We'll get into that in a later episode. This is also where print hello world will print the words hello world. I'll show you right now. Let's go to the test tab and press run. Run just runs a server on your machine without starting any players. You can also press play solo, which will start both a server and a player in the same window. This isn't all that useful for most things, except building testing or something very quick. The most useful one, which we'll use later on, is to start a server and choose a number of players to start the server with. But for now, we're just going to run the current state of the game. Here, you now see, up oh, on top of many other things, Hello World has been printed into our output. This is directly from our script. If we wanted to change what our script said, all we'd have to do is go to our script tab. From our script tab, 
we could change what's inside these single quotation marks. Say we wanted to say something more like, I love Roblox. All we'd have to do is type print quotation mark, I love Roblox quotation mark, and run the game. Down here you will now see, instead of hello world, I love Roblox. Now, the thing about many commands and functions, as we'll get into later on, in Lua, which Lua is the scripting language that Roblox utilizes for its users, is that the commands can be used several ways. However, the most typical and probably best way to use the commands is in the following format. You put a parenthesis immediately after the name of the command or function. If you have a string as a parameter, which we'll get into what those two words mean, however, just know in this case we do. This is a string and it will be used as a parameter or argument. We will now put a double quotation mark, as this is more common for strings. And at the end, we have to put a matching double quotation mark to, ma to indicate the end of the string. We now need a closing parenthesis to show that we have finished feeding our arguments to our, me our method or function. I just use a lot of big words and strange terms that you might not have heard before. But trust me, we'll get into it. For now, just type your script up like this. And we're going to actually change it one more time. We're going to say this scripting series is getting off to a start. It is your job to fill in those three dots with good or bad, and then let me know in the comments. Run. And there we go. This scripting series is getting off to a start. What do you think of the scripting series? Do you like the new format? How's it going? What are your opinions? It's still in its infancy, so if you have any thoughts or additions you would like to see added, please tell me, and I'll do my best. Thank you for watching. This has been Code Theorem in the first episode of Introduction to Scripting. Thank you again for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day, and that you can get off to your scripting career in no time. Goodbye.